Okay, so now we're at the second hole. Um, as mentioned before, that there are three holes per planet, which it totals to nine challenge questions that are physics-based. So for the second hole, we're looking at um, observe the effect the type of club has on the trajectory of the golf ball on a planet without atmosphere. This is actually an interesting question because, like I talked about earlier, about how uh, the trajectory of the golf ball on a planet with no atmosphere mirrors the actual questions that you're going to see in the high school level physics, where you have equations where you can calculate the height, the maximum height the ball reaches, the total distance it travels, knowing certain variable inputs in the beginning. So, this, we noticed earlier that when I preview line where the ball is going to go, there is a perfect looking parabolic arc which is not what happens when you have atmosphere, which we will get to later. So this is telling me observe what effect the club has on that trajectory, on the parabolic arc. So we're, we're not only focusing on the actual club, you know, and the difference that the trajectory will take, but we're kind of scaffolding a little bit behind the scenes of the fact that we have a parabolic arc. We're, we're calling attention for the students to what the path is that this is taking, and it's substantially different from on a planet like Earth when there is atmosphere. Okay, so first I'm going to fill my energy meter. Go through the tutorial. Now I'm going to switch to side view, and it's going to prompt me right now to switch my club. So we'll see the wedge, which has a 50, 50 degree loft angle. Now let's switch to the driver, because the driver is usually what, what students will select. It's what on Earth, from the leadoff tee, is going to get you the maximum amount of distance. It's kind of the sole purpose of the driver. So let's compare it to how far the wedge goes. So you can see that the, the driver actually goes substantially less. And, and actually the, uh, the iron even goes farther than the driver all the way up to the wedge. Now the reason behind this is because of the loft angle. When you have no atmosphere, the only dictating force that you have is gravity, which means the only factors playing into the distance the ball is traveling is how close of a loft angle you have to 45 degrees because that will achieve the maximum distance. And then because then you just have gravity pulling down. So what actually ends up happening with a driver with a 10 degree loft angle, and 10 degrees is really all that's contributing with gravity to the distance it travels, it's not going to go as far. We need to get as close to 45 degrees as we can. And so this is one of the reasons why the wedge achieves the farthest distance. And there are, and you can actually use the equations that you get at the high school level for physics to calculate why that angle achieves the maximum distance, which actually creates this opportunity for more facilitation to come in at, at every sort of hole that we have in this opportunity. So now I'm going to go through, and I'm going to hit the ball, and I'm going to try and get it over there as best as possible so we can get to see what the question at the end is. And you can see that I can use my mulligan right here, and this was from answering the previous question correctly. Okay, so now let's talk about this visual. This visual right here is scaffolding component vectors and the relationship the velocity has with acceleration, which will be a later question that we'll get to. So you can see that we don't have lift, we don't have drag, we literally just have the two velocity components, which the horizontal will not be changing. This horizontal component right here will stay fixed. And I apologize, it's a little bit it's going off screen, but this component right here is the only one that's really going to change. When it's rising, this will be positive up here. When it's, when it's dropping down, this will be down here, negative. And the component vector is its net direction, which is not drawn here. Now acceleration of gravity will remain constant and be constantly pulling down in the same regard. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to get into the hole as easily as possible. And, you know, an inter another interesting thing as well is when you, in real golf, when you hit it into the rough, you become less accurate. Your shot becomes less accurate. So one of the ways that we sort of mirrored that in this environment is that you'll notice that the preview line is a little bit faded out right here. And you lose about the percentage, so this is about 75% rough train, so you've lost about 75% of your preview bar. All right, so now I'm just going to hit this. Throughout the game, talked about earlier, there's the pause button, which can, is, is really well used during the physics visual as the ball is in flight. However, throughout the game, there are also these telemetry labels. 
So the telemetry labels serve as a way to observationally include physics concepts without taking away from the fluid gameplay, but as well offer opportunities for a deeper dive through facilitation. Um, mass and weight is intrinsically a tough concept and a misconception, and it's tough it, for even later grade levels to really kind of understand specifically the mass. I think weight is, is pretty well understood, but um, they're interchangeable to some regard. So you can click on this fact and you'll have another physics fact that has a little bit of a better explanation and also a Wikipedia page that you can click on, this link goes to that, where you can, go, you can further investigate what the difference between these two concepts is. Um, well, I guess up here on our left we have our interface where these will change depending on the planet. For right now we have no wind because we have no atmosphere. We have the type of terrain which is going to be that percentage of that preview shot that you have. And then we have the, the, the force of gravity right here. Okay, so now I'm just going to try and get onto the green. Which I want a little chip. Let's see if I can get it into that hole. Now the green preview line right here is what you want to aim for in the interface. You, you project out how many joules you want to input and then you match it up with the green and then you swing through and hit it. Okay, so I've made it on the green. It's got a good amount of roll on it. Hopefully I can get this on par right here. Looks like a long putt though. Ooh, got a big slope too. Alright. There we go. There. Okay. Oh. Friction one. I do like, Lexi, I do like the, uh, the putting expansion, the expanded putting bar. That is nice. Yeah. I do, I like that a lot. <laughs> putting is as hard in this game as it is in real life. There we go, okay. Okay, so now we're at the, the second challenge question. The question is, which club will hit the farthest on our planet without atmosphere? Assume the same amount of energy is put into the ball for each club. This is important to remember because different clubs, um, as a human being, may require a different amount of energy to make it go the same speed coming down. Now a robot, we can dictate the amount of energy that goes in as opposed to some of the other factors that play into a human golfing. So for this question, we saw that the wedge was definitely going the farthest. The, these are the other clubs and also an outlier that they, they all get to hit the same distance. We definitely know that this wedge is closer to 45 degrees, which will achieve the maximum amount of distance. And so that, I am assuming, is our correct answer.